Okay, so moving on to the multi-scale uh, polymer crystal structure. This is the uh, highest level, the largest level of the polymer uh, crystalline structure. That is the focus is on what is called the spherulite. Okay, so spherulite is a uh, one that a morphology in the polymer crystal, and that's a little bit very a very complicated structure, but it's also widely observed, and then this is something that uh, we have to uh, we have to discuss, and that's uh, it's actually the heart of the polymer crystal structure uh, in this section. Uh, so this is a usually grown from the melt, which is a polymer as it is, or the concentrated solution, not as this, you know, something like a very dilute solution, something less than 0.1 weight percent, and you can hopefully grow the single crystal but this one is essentially pretty common. Uh, and then the, I, I'm going to show the, some uh, evidence of the spherulite structures, and then the, actually the more like something called the Maltis cross pattern on the cross-polarized microscope, and then this is uh, something that I'm going to po focus on even, this is the, what I call the part, part C dash A. Okay, and in the part C uh, dash two, I'm going to talk about more what what I call the multi-scale supramolecular structure within the lamella spherulite. So let me just focus on these two first, and this one is essentially showing the uh, one of the uh, fracture surfaces, SM picture and of the polymer crystal, okay? It looks like it's uh, pretty large, and if you look like a round and spherulite, right? And then this is a picture that under the optical, cross-polarized optical microscope, uh, well, polarized microscope, it's not cross-polarized, just a polarized microscope, and crystal domains are having a multiple colors because light sources are rainbow colors, and you are, you are seeing this, a lot of different interference uh, color patterns. And this is this is huge. Okay, this is uh, this scale here is hundred micrometer, and the polymer crystal size can be really large, or can be of you know, this size. I also find this picture uh, in the textbook, seventeen point one four, and this is the A is the fracture surface of brittle sample of low molar mass of polymer showing in spherulite structures and I think the uh, this is a polypropylene okay so this is the polypropylene polypropylene and the thing is actually the a little going to a little details is a low molecular waste poly polymer is when they form this spherulite they tend to actually form this what is called a tie molecule this spherulite polymer chains actually going going across and uh, between spherulite, but if you use a lower molar mass, the chances for having a time molecule is less, so you can kind of isolate one spherulite from the other spherulite, right? So you can see that different faceted of spherulite. It's almost like a growing, and then you can see this faceted morphologies because they are kind of bumping each other. It's like a, you can think about imagining like a beer bubbles, right? Bubbles, you can see that they kind of grow and then they bump into each other, they form a multifaceted. These are the, when they grow on the different seeded crystal of the polymers and they start to bump each other, they form these faceted faces and it's pretty clear, okay? And if you use a lower mass, actually you, you should be able to kind of isolate them. So this is a fracture surfaces. Uh, uh, of the polymer spherulite, and which is, looks very uh, clear. And then this is what is called the etched surface of polymer crystal, of poly polypropylene, so that you can kind of the, uh, look at the cross-sectional, uh, so that the orientation of lamella. This is uh, something related to the lamella, and then it's, uh, the more detailed structure is, uh, will be discussed in part C-2, okay? Uh, so, it's pretty clear that polymer lamella, which is uh, the lamella is uh, like like I draw before. This is uh, at the range of thicknesses about 100 angstroms to let's say 500 angstrom, okay? So that's a lamella thickness L. And they are kind of folded again and again, and then they start to form this uh, gigantic 
sphere-like structure than spherulite, and it has been observed consistently throughout the semi crystalline polymers. And then I'm going to talk to you about the, what is called the Maltese cross pattern, and uh, this is a very uh, unique, and it has been experimentally used uh, quite well. So, you know the Maltese cross? Uh, this is a small island in the Mediterranean Sea, right? There is a, this knight, uh, the Maltese cross, and they have this pattern. They, I think the most common pattern is like this, this. Oh, right, so let me try to, if you, if you actually do the Google on Maltese cross, you will see that there is a lot, a lot of different patterns, just looks like that. This is a, their pattern on their shield. And this, uh, uh, they formed this, uh, this is a lot of different design of this Maltese cross, but that's the one that this knights uh, having this uh, as a part of their, uh, the, the, sh the shield and they're having use, and then they're all using there a lot of different places. Okay, so the Maltese cross pattern is actually can be easily visible on the cross polarized microscope when you're looking at the polymers. And this is an example of single spherulite growing in an isotactic polystyrene. So this is an isotactic polystyrene. They put it on the cross polarized optical microscope. Cross polarized microscope means you have a plane that is a polarized light uh, coming this. So if you shine the light from the top and if you put your sample in, but the, there is a, you are putting this two under the cross polarized microscope. So they are, the polarized orientation is perpendicular to each other. And then you, you are put, placing your sample in between a defined thicknesses. And then you are going to look it under the, I guess, uh, under the microscope and the people are uh, looking at it, okay. So there's a, there's a there's a lens, and then they're going to look at this how how the material looks like. If if this my sample is an isotropic, right, and then what's going to happen is when the light comes in, it will be polarized in this way, and then when they pass through it and they will have a same polarization so therefore there's no light will come out right so you will be looking at dark and that's the what uh, where it should be dark like that right and this is exactly where you're seeing here in this region shown up here this is a where you're seeing the dark pattern because of the light is polarized this way and so that uh, this light now uh, can uh, when they the polymer crystal actually have a, all the radial orientation, and particularly those polymer crystal will not change the polarization. So after the polarization, it will be like uh, they will pass through this sample, and then after that, it will not pass through it. So that's the that's an example. And then the other one is you will see the exactly the uh, perpendicular to this uh, the dark pattern is the one that when you pass the polarized light, and this is a pattern that is going to also dark because uh, when the uh, crystals are essentially instead of parallel to the polarized light, if they are the perpendicular to the polarized light, they will not change the polarization or we'll just uh, maintain the light polarization as they are. So you will not, the light cannot go through like this. And when you have a polymer uh, crystal oriented at 45 degrees, so here's, a, here's an example that I, I will try to draw. So if, if the light goes through, however, if, and, and then if the crystal is now like a 45 degrees, right? So then, then there, there will be something looks like that. So there will be a, so therefore, the, there's the polarized light components uh, so I should draw the uh, pol polarized light. So if the first of uh, then they uh, pass through the polarization, and the light is more like this polarization, but now the or orientation of the crystal is a 45, not 90, not 0 degrees C. So this is a 0 degrees, not C, 0 degree angle, and this is 90 degree angle, but this time is a 45 degree angle. In that case, so they, they start to develop certain... Uh, 
sort of the uh, elliptical polarization so that there is a component of polarization this way and the polari polarization the other way. So, and then if you put down the, the uh, so therefore this one is polar, having the polarization of uh, both ways, and so that the, the, some of the light path through it, and this is a light, is a bright pattern shown up here, which is a, can be shown up here, can be shown up here, and shown up here. So that's uh, uh, that's what I what I uh, trying to trying to explain it to you. That's uh, that's the one at the 45 degree angle, and uh, from the uh, incident uh, polarizer, and then this is what they call in the name is a polarizer. This is an analyzer, and in the terminology is in the cross polarized microscope. Uh, a lot of different micro Walters cross or micro uh, images can be shown up. This is a lot more refined. You can see the ripples uh, size, and this is a lot of uh, crystals uh, bumping into each other, and you can see that. But the Maltese cross pattern is pretty pretty clear, right? So this is where the polarizer are located, and this is where the analyzer located, and those uh, cannot change the polarization. So that's why it looks like. And because of the fringe patterns, and then you can see that where the crystal start bumping to each other when you grow it from the concentrated solution or right in the melt. But the melt is cross is pretty clear. And I was uh, actually looking at the Wikipedia pages. If you can looking at the Wikipedias, and actually they give you the molecular axis, uh, radio molecular axis, which is uh, can they can oscillate and change the polarization of the light. Uh, you can think about the lamella crystal, just looks like that. And this is a polarizer axis. And because of that, uh, those at the not in line with the polarizer or analyzer axis, they are the one, and this, these, these are the one, okay, these are the one they can essentially, light can pass through, and that's what you see on here, okay? But those who are in alignment, this purple line, which is the same as a dark line shown up here, they are the one that can light cannot, uh, light is essentially blocked, and then you see the dark patterns are showing up. So that's the Maltese cross pattern uh, that is coming up. So it's actually, I have to explain to you about the cross polarized pattern but, uh, on the, from the spare light. The, the big message that I'm trying to have it here, uh, here is, uh, it is big, okay? So this is a 200 micron. So that's, a, I would say, you know, uh, 300 micron. And then it's uh, almost like a uh, it's like a faceted uh, spherulite because when they're grown from the homogeneous, uh, like a liquid, uh, rubbery state, when they uh, start to, the lamella crystals uh, start to pack itself, some, themselves together to grow and grow, and it's eventually they bump into other, each other in the three-dimensional way. Okay, so this is about the section part C1, about the spherulite. And then the, this material is grown from the melt to a concentrate solution. And also I ex try to explain to you about Maltese cross pattern, which is a distinct evidence uh, to show you have a polymer crystal in a spherulite form um, in the, using the cross-polarized microscope.